ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for one of the biggest artists in the country right now! Round of applause for Chevy Sheen! Oh, do you guys know Chevy Sheen is out? What is Chevy Sheen? So you don't know him? No. I see my eye, why not? Hey, did you see Chevy Sheen's numbers? Hey, yeah, hey, they twerking hard, those numbers, bro. <laughs> Fuck! There's that shit that's twerking. I don't know, that guy. I've never seen like that. I've never, I've never, I've never in my life, bro. It's your time, bro. Oh, like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's time, Half a million bro. one day. That's not. Yes, that's, bro. Twerk up. Mm hmm, cares. <laughs> what you see on camera is what you see off air. No manga manga business. Since the year of 2021, Shebesheet has taken the world of social media by storm, dominating the trends and captivating the collective imagination. Just when you thought you have seen it all, Shebesheet defies expectations, growing larger and delving deeper into the hearts of devoted fans. Brace yourself for a roller coaster of emotions as this rising star evokes intense and conflicting reactions, leaving countless of souls not knowing whether they should love or hate him. Dilo Kono was born 1995 in Leboahomo, Limpopo, South Africa. He actually grew up in a very difficult situation where his father being a hustler and his mother being a teacher. With his father's absence looming larger due to their early divorce, Shebeshit found himself moving back and forth between Tembisa and Leboahomo. He didn't want to grow up without his father. However, fate had other plans, as his father eventually vanished from their lives. Sheba's brother was a hardcore hip-hop fan, and slowly by surely, Sheba also started developing love for this kind of music, drawing him into the world of music dominated by legends like Biggie and Tupac. Yet, as the lyrics of these influential artists often embrace a darker side, Sheba found himself grappling with the subtle impact it had on his own life. Despite the challenges, he managed to complete his high school education in 2013, only to face financial obstacles that forced him to drop out of college the following year. Just when it seemed like hope was slipping away, the arrival of his first child in 2015 brought both joy and uncertainty. Now, Sheba found himself standing at the crossroad, a man with no job, no financial security, and the weighty responsibility of caring for his child. So how do you get into a life of crime? Like no weather. Ah, crime is easy. Just pass your guava. Ah, na gola parafan mi be. Agar ke na la small lava. Eh, eh, na gola vela parafan mi be le lor be ke musole lava. You queen si vela. I wanna go mukhumu. I'm from San Juan. So I got bacon and eggs, ham and cheese vela. Cheese. Na na ga gola ga jo lava. Eh, eh, mara na vela be San Juan mo feli ham and cheese. Eh. So, so no 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 it's no shabadi kara no ah but ah big sa shabadi kara na no eh na ibigin yaga sa straight so no tsena kai eh no tsena kai it didn't last much time for shabe to realize the responsibility ahead of him as a young man and that made him to join the street life so he can put food on the table and ever since then his life has been surrounded with chaos and neighborhood scandals going around in the neighborhood dropping spaza shops, breaking into houses for valuables and marking people for phones and clothes to resell for money. Being involved with this kind of activities, Shebe ended up making enemies and rifles from other gangs. And also he was in and out of jail. Now Shebe was known for this kind of activities in his neighborhood and this new reputation made him and his friends one of the most feared gangsters in town. However, this also came with a lot of challenges in his life, like losing a lot of friends due to the street life that they were living. One day, Shebe overheard a neighbor talking with his mother. The neighbor was complaining about the guys that they were making noise next door. Turns out, that is a producer's house. Shebe knew that he had to tune something. He's a hustler, remember? In that studio, there might be big screen TVs, tablets, iPhones, and some mics. He knew that if he can get his hands on those things, that would make him a lot of money to take care of his baby. One morning, he decided to see this building himself. He went to see this house, and when he got there, it was loud as usual. All the doors were locked, leaving him with one option, to bust in through the window. As soon as he got in with his gun in his waist, he saw a gang of kids looking at him. Luckily, they were terrified because they knew how dangerous he is. While all of this was happening, there is a beat that was playing on the speakers. Then he asked to throw in a verse. Yeah, I guess that beat was so dope in such a way that he forgot what it was there for. From that day, he never looked back. He continued making music. And luckily, in a short space of time, one of his verses got picked up by a TikTok algorithm. 
it went super viral, catching the eyes of Focalistic and Bobby Cooper. I think like, you know, like whole ability she be shit, you know, is one of those I never wait talanya until we talanya and then impact ana lingyona. Okay, see hi. Lidri, you are not impact. But when Zagala ni ngabantu baka she be shit, ang nandaba. In fact, when I see them at the robot, I become scared. A guy like Shebi Shed puts the reality of what South African youth looks like in our faces in Khan. And that's what I was hoping that people would get from the episode. So, yeah. Not his antics or where he came from, or what he had to do to get here. Not even his music. Mm. You guys made us face what makes us uncomfortable. Because we don't want to see it anymore. Mm. We go to pantry of Sugu and spend money eating up. Not because it's a bad thing, because you can afford it. But you as saw walking into that building, getting that salary, having that exposure and having that financial freedom. You are one in a, you are a drop in the ocean. Mm -hmm. You can bump into any other white person or any other color who doesn't dress the same as you, who has five times more than you and you wouldn't even know it. Mm -hmm. Tina, we stand out. So when a guy like Shabby Shit says, you know, I mean, I used to take people's phones eh? and I used to stab them as well. And I used to, you know, even where I recorded, I went there because I wanted to rob them. Mm. And you know how to get into a house, take a jack, and then, you, yeah, then we don't, we don't hear this. Because we are manufacturing these people with our opulence as black people who have money and who have, who have an opportunity to, we can do it. Yeah. And then one day when those people become the majority and decide to vote for a party that they feel like represents them, guess who's going to suffer? You, me, every one of us here. Yeah living in that 50 kilometer square radius because why we are indebted to the banks those buildings there sister bands are corner like if those companies decide good i know we can't do this anymore we're we are all screwed mm -hmm. so that's why i'm saying we're, we're not worried enough then we look at a guy like Shabby shit then we look at what he's done but then we don't look at what we've done to him <laughs> And he represents a whole group of people. A whole, a, a massive. I yeah. mean, the numbers are telling. Yeah, but if, you know, we can sit with him in the studio and laugh. But if you were rolling in your complex now after a jog, we are six and tambam, and see a guy like that, mm. you feel safe. Okay, that that is Eugene Koza. He was on a podcast in Chill with Meg G, and he made some pretty serious point about Shebeshit. But I feel like we can mise all of those things and look at it this way. Shebeshit has one of the most interesting come up and his story is inspiring. I mean, he managed to change from being a bad guy to be a good guy. That's crazy. And this is going to influence a lot of kids out there to do the same. I just want to say, Shebeshit, I don't know what does it mean, but I just want to say, Ntweka, Shita. <laughs> <laughs>